Okay, so turn on the instrument and come over here and double click on the Lab Solutions IR icon. You get the same thing if you click on Lab Solutions. Say OK. The first thing we're going to do today is Spectrum. So I'm going to click on Spectrum. And it's going to initialize the program. You always will get this message. Do not be concerned about that. And if it's open, it's going to let me know previous background exists. Remove the marked data. I'm going to say yes. And now what it's going to take a while, the instrument's going to initialize. So it's going to go through some diagnostics and do some testing and initialize. After it's done initialization, this will all be green. So we're going to take a break. It's going to set the aperture and do some things. Okay, so after initialization, you see all this is green, and this little window here pops up. At this point, just say OK. Now what we need to do is a couple things, and we're going to set up how we're going to run the method. So in the method, most times you're going to want to be in percent transmittance. So leave that percent transmittance. Apodization, Hapgenzel, is the one we usually want to use. That's simply a processing of the raw signal that you get. Number of scans, we're going to go with 20. The more scans you do, the less noise you get, but it also takes longer. Resolution, we'll go with 2 for now. 2, 4, good. Uh, the range, I'm going to start at 500. Below 500, you really get a lot of noise, so that's going to eliminate some of the noise. And up to a max of 4,000. These other tabs here, I would not worry about. There's nothing of any use to you in there. Uh, those are for special attachments and special conditions. So again, to keep things simple, we're going to just say that these are the conditions we want. Now, if I'm happy with my parameters, I come up here and say save parameters. I'm going to give it a name. And save. So this way, if I run in the future, I know all my settings are going to be identical. And that's important to have consistent settings when you're looking at data. And now, again, if I want to load that data, again, we saved it, so I came in and I wasn't sure I had the same conditions. Say so I changed this to uh, 45, and uh, this was 1,200. This one was using it before me, and 3,000, whatever that may be. So that's why I have that, and now I can come here and say load parameters. There's my parameters. I'm going to come down here to November 8th, say open. And you can see it changes all the things back to where we need them to be. So, the first thing we need to do is do a background scan. Okay, so you want to make sure the sample compartment is empty. Or if you're using the ATR, that the ATR crystal is clean. That there's no residue on it. We're using the ATR currently. So at this point, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to hit Background Scan. It's going to, do, to prepare a compartment for Background Scan. Again, the preparation just mean, makes, means make sure there's nothing in there that's going to give us any signal, that unwanted signal. So I'm going to say OK. And again, we're going to take a pause because this takes a while. OK. Upon completion of the Background Scan, here we are. So I want to go back to measure, so I'm going to go up here, I'm going to click on measure again. So now we're set to go. So in here, I give it a file name. Now what you need to do is make sure where's our data going. So if I want to make a new file for today, I'm going to go in there, November 8th, and I'm going to call this test1. Okay. The comment, I'm just going to call it a, it's a bag, a sample name. Again, these don't have to be, what's important is the file name and where we're putting it. These comments, name, and ID are, and options, those are just for additional information so that you know more about the sample when you run and you'll look at it later. Uh, you can also put that stuff in a report. 
back one, sample ID, whatever. So at this point, what I would do then is I'm going to come over here and do sample scan. Oops. I stopped that because I forgot to do the most important thing, which is put the sample on the ATR. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the sample on the ATR. And when you're using the ATR, continue to turn the knob until it slips. It has a slip on it. What's important is that we have consistent pressure during all of our measurements. So make sure that you twist it until it slips. So I'm going to pause this for a moment and put the bag on there. Actually, I can do that real simply. So uh, putting the bag on there, twisting it down, it's slipping. And now I go to sample scan. And now we should have something good. And again, it's going to do 20 scans. And uh, we're going to take a pause rather than watch these 20 scans. OK, so after I'm done doing the scans, it comes up here. And you can see a test 001. I'm going to go back to measurements again. And I'm going to measure a different bag here. And I'm going to call it uh, false bag. I'm going to simply put it on the ATR. And uh, again, turn the knob down until it slips. And I'll call this test 2. It would auto increment anyway because I have the uh, auto increment checked here. So I'm going to say again, sample scan. Now we're going to scan a second sample. So uh, again, you can see this bag here is very different. I'm going to pause it and let it do its scans. OK, so here's my second bag. You can see the spectrum is very different than the first bag. OK, uh, if I want to go back and measure more, you just go back to measurement here. You can put in comments, uh, all this stuff here. What's important is the file name and know where we stuck it. OK, so that's the measurement portion. I'm going to go back here into search here. And this is the last sample I ran. Uh, or just a view here. In view here, I can go over to the first bag here. If I want to do a search on that, I simply click on the search. I come over here and I select these are all the libraries we have. I can have it search all the libraries, or I can just select the libraries which make sense. I know it's not food additives, it's not inorganic, uh, agrochemicals. I'll leave polymers in there. And again, to just go through these and determine which ones make sense to have in there. Uh, or again, it doesn't hurt to have them search them all. Uh, then we're going to go down here, and we're simply going to do primarily is what we call a spectrum search. There's different kind of searches, but the easiest one to do is a spectrum search. So I click on spectrum search. And here's what we get. And it's not showing me anything. Why? Let's pause this for a moment. 